Greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you are taking your seed, I just want you to greet someone next to you. Just greet someone next to you. Say you are welcome in Jesus' name. You can push further and tell that person you are beautiful. You are handsome. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Hallelujah. Is someone happy to be in the presence of God this morning? Is someone happy to be here this morning? Hallelujah. I just want you to do one thing for me. Just shout a shout of victory. Just shout to the Lord. A convincing one for that matter. Hallelujah. A convincing one. That is what I want. You know, the, the last but one song they sang was that we are a carrier of victory. And the writer was saying, God has chosen me to be what? A carrier of that victory. Probably he was looking at his origin. He was looking at where the Lord picked him from. And he was saying, how come God has chosen a man like me? Hallelujah. Our God is a loving father. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we thank you for this morning. We know you are already here. Holy Spirit, we dedicate this moment into your hands. Do what you want to do. Lord, I'm simply a vessel. I decrease that you may increase in this place in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the word that will be coming forth. The Bible says the entrance of your word brings life. Let that light so shine that darkness will begin to disappear from our lives. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time... I want to start by thanking the Almighty God for this opportunity that is given to me to minister to you what a word that he laid in my heart. But before I go to the word, I want to sincerely thank our senior pastor, Pastor Jean-Claude, for granting me this opportunity to stand before the congregation of God's people. My thanks or gratitude goes as well to the members of the advisory committee, Pastor Gigi and Pastor Solomon, for the confidence and the trust. And may I equally thank the congregation for being here. I know it was a chilly morning. Most of us were already excited that we are getting to summer. But somehow, somewhere, Something changed over the weekend. Hallelujah. But as you are here, I know that the Lord will minister something to you. Hallelujah. So people of God, this morning, the Lord laid in my heart to speak to you about a cry that attracts God. A cry that attracts God. Before I go to the text, we are living in a world and in such a time where so many people are crying, so many people are praying, but the biggest question is, is God responding to all the prayers? Is the Lord responding to all the cries? There is a particular cry that touches the heart of God. And that is what I want us to look at it this morning. Our text is Luke chapter 18. 
I'm going to read from verse 35 to 43. Luke chapter 18. If you have your Bible with you, you can open to that scripture. Luke chapter 18, verse 35, from verse 35 to verse 43. It's a story that many of us, we know. It's a story that many of us, we have gone through. But I want you to flow with me. Maybe God wants to show you something this morning in that particular scripture. And this same text or this same scripture, we can find it in Mark chapter 10. For those who have this book. Our senior pastor, Pastor Jean-Claude, wrote something beautiful about what I want to say this morning. So I'm going to use part of it and I'm going to continue from where our sister, Sister Gladys ended last week. Encounters of God kind. Sister Gladys, thank you so much. You know, each time I go back to that message, I'm so touched. And uh, last Friday, during our time of champions, Pastor Gigi Njinja did again, giving close to five importance of our spirits. It was so beautiful. I want to tell somebody in this congregation that you are missing something. Church programs are so wonderful. Church programs are so beautiful. My introduction, I got it from our Wednesday Bible study, when we were looking at the future. Hallelujah. So you see, it's a combination of what happened throughout the week. So let's go to the scripture. It's a story of a man that was blind and he was sitting by the roadside and begging. So let's go. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho Jesus that was coming near Jericho that a certain blind man and this man in Mark chapter 10 his name is Bartimaeus the son of Timaeus meaning the son of honor because his father's name was what? Father, I mean father of honor but now this man was blind and not only blind he was also a beggar and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 39. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out the more. Son of David. That was his cry again. Have mercy on me. 40. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him. Saying, what do you want me to do for you? And the man replied. Lord, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately, media, and immediately he received his sight and followed him and glorified God. And all the people when they saw it, gave praise to God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. People of God, before I go to the heart of my message, I want to share with us three lessons that I got from this text. Three lessons. Lesson number one. 
is in verse 35. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho that a certain blind man sat by the road begging and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. Let me hold it there. My question to someone this morning is that what do you hear? What do you hear? This man was sitting there and doing his daily job. But all of a sudden, he saw there was commotion in town. You know, there was a lot of vibration in town. Just imagining that Jesus himself is approaching Pochefstrom. I'm telling you, there will be traffic jam. There will be noise screaming all over the place. And this man, hearing that noise, he did something. What do you hear is the question I want to ask you. What do you tune your ear to from your friends, from people around you? Because from the story of this man, you will agree with me that what you hear determines what you get. What you hear will determine what you get. What you hear will determine what you get. This man heard that noise. He heard the crowd panicking, probably preparing a way for the son of David. And he began to ask, what is happening? And the people told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. The Bible says, consider carefully what you hear. In other words, you have to pay attention to what you hear and what you tune your ear to. Because not everything that you hear will bring success to your life. We add value to your life. It's not everything that you hear. It doesn't matter the source. You can say it is for, from your best friend forever. No, because he's your best friend. It doesn't mean that the information that he or she is giving you is correct. Remember, Paul was saying in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then, faith comes by what? Hearing. And what are you hearing? You hear the word of of God. It's not just hearing. Sister Gladys said he was talking about the computer and the software. Being the software being our spirit, the computer being what? Being this body. Now there's another language I want to add in computer sciences. It says garbage in, garbage out. Your input determines what? Your output. So you must be careful with your input. Let me open a quick bracket. What do you tell people? This man inquired from the people that were around him and they gave him what? The right, the correct information. What do you tell people? about Jesus and the church of Jesus. What do you tell people? I want you to examine yourself. What do you tell people about Jesus? What knowledge do you know, do you have about Jesus? What revelation do you have about him? Remember the story of Jesus in Matthew chapter 16. When he asked his disciples that what do people say the son of man is? In that scripture, people gave their own answers. Partially correct 
or incorrect or whatsoever. And Jesus was not happy. He turned to his disciples, those who were following him, and he asked them, what do you say I am? What do you? It's not about other people. It's about you. What revelation do you have about me? And Peter stood up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And a promise, a blessing was proclaimed on Peter. He says, blessed are you. Be careful with the information that you spread. You might be persecuting Jesus. Whether speaking about Jesus or about the church of Christ. Remember Jesus was saying to Peter, based on this revelation, I build my church. This church does not belong to anyone. It belongs to Jesus. The senior pastor, the pastors in this ministry are just here to direct you, to give you direction, to give you guidance. The church belongs to Jesus. Therefore, if you are speaking ill about the church, it's not about the pastor, it's about Jesus. You are persecuting him. My question to you this morning, Will you be the carrier of good news or a carrier of gossips spreading wrong information? Because imagine these people, they gave the wrong information to blind Bartimaeus. He wouldn't have received his healing because the information that he received helped him to get something. And that is why I'm going now. The second question in that lesson one is that what do you do with the information you get? What do you do with the knowledge you have received? I know in this church, there are students here, Yepik is here, RSF is here. There are geniuses in this church. You might be a genius having cum laude in all your subjects, but it's meaningless if you cannot translate that information into something. Yeah, you move with a certificate, the first in engineering, canvas. Now you can't produce, how do I call it? A simple screwdriver. Then that information is useless. This man inquired and got the right information and then he put the information into practice. What did he do? He cried out. I want to give you a beautiful formula that you need to remember. Information plus action equals to desired result. Information plus action will lead to the desired result. This man got the correct information. He applied it and he ended up doing what? Having the right result. James 1 verse 22 says, but don't just be, listen, no, don't, but don't just listen to God's words. What have you done with all the beautiful sermons you have listened to from this pulpit online? What have you done with the information you've gathered from this scripture, or I mean from the Bible? Some of us will boast we have read from Genesis to Revelation about four times, 20 times. Is there a reflection of this word in your life? That is what matters. Because you can read like somebody who is reading a novel. A lot of us bought this book last week. I was speaking about where can we find this same story. And I know some of us don't know that it is in here. 
isn't it? Because the book is somewhere around our pillow. When we turn and we look at it, whoa, Pastor Jean-Claude, the four Ds on the road to success. I will read it tomorrow. I will read it the next hour. And the next hour is never coming. Tomorrow we come, you will postpone again. We've often heard that knowledge is power. But I want to tell you, knowledge without application becomes powerless. Hallelujah. Let me wrap up this lesson one by saying to you, to get the desired results, it starts with acquiring the correct information. And then applying it. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. To get the desired results, it starts with acquiring and getting the correct information. Then you apply it. Let's quickly go to lesson 2 from this text. When Bartimaeus got the correct information in Luke chapter 8 verse 38 he cried out meaning he put the information into what? into action he didn't stop there when they told him those who went ahead of him they said keep quiet he persisted and the Bible says he cried out the more. Showing what? Desperation. He was so desperate to receive his breakthrough. And I want to tell someone here, your desperation will take you into a place of restoration, into a place of breakthrough. It's about how desperate you are. Hallelujah. The man was so desperate, he didn't want to look at what the people around him were saying. Keep quiet. He said, no, I can't keep quiet. And you know, deep in me, I'm just thinking about this, about this man sitting out there and he's begging. Probably in his mind, he's saying, these people are saying something that they don't know. Do you think it's pleasant for me to stand by the, by the robot there? I'm asking for two rand, five cents. Whereas there are people sitting in air-conditioned office or offices. There are people working and getting good salary. But I'm here begging. And then you are telling me I should keep quiet. Oh, come on. I am not keeping quiet. I will shout the more. Jesus! You know, it's often said, he who wears the shoe knows where it pinches. He who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. Early this morning, our brother, Brother Roger, during intercession was saying, Jesus already did everything for you and for me. It's left for you to go and receive. How thirsty are you? How hungry are you? How desperate are you to receive what Jesus already did on the cross? Because on the cross, he said, it is finished. Testless time. I have done everything. Come to me. Receive your healing. Come to me. Receive your breakthrough. Come to me and receive your deliverance. It's all about your desperation. It's all about how hungry, how thirsty you are. And your test will cause Jesus not to pass you by. Remember, Jesus was not coming to Bartimaeus. He was passing by. He was not coming to see him. He had no appointment with him, but his desperation Hallelujah. created room for an appointment. Yeah. 
You know, in the presence of God, in the house of God, there is freedom. We, we are not here as if, you know, we, we, we need to be too, how do I put it, protocora. At times we can also make jokes. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we are paying attention to what we are saying, hallelujah. Let's go to lesson three. Remember, when this man was crying to Jesus for help, the Bible says that those who went ahead of him, they asked him to be quiet. Lesson three is that you might encounter resistance or opposition on your way to breakthrough. Hallelujah. You might encounter resistance or opposition on your way to your breakthrough. Pastor Jean-Claude wrote in his book, and I quote, On the road to success, there will be obstacles. For sure. God promised us that. A Christian life is not a life without opposition, without obstacles. He said, on the road to success, there will be obstacles. Never let them silence the voice of your desire. Don't let them. This man never listened to what those people were saying. He shouted the more. He didn't. You know, Apostle Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, he says, for a great and effective door has been opened to me. And there are what? Many adversaries. There are many adversaries. But there is good news for someone. James 4, 7 says, So submit to the authority of God. Then you resist the devil or you stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Those oppositions should not stop you. Those oppositions should not be your concern. Continue to push forward. The devil doesn't want us to be free. He doesn't. He's not rejoicing over your salvation. He's not rejoicing over you being set free. Of course, he's just doing his job description. John 10.10 10 says, For a thief comes but for one reason, to do what? To steal and to kill. But I tell someone listening to me, there is good news for you. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Jesus is the only one that can take you out of that predicament. That is the promise of Jesus to you and me. Your freedom is guaranteed. You are a victor and no more a victim in Christ Jesus. They might come. The devil can try what he want to do. But I promise you, at the end of the day, victory is our portion. Hallelujah. Having looked at those three lessons, Going back to my title, a cry that attracts God. You must be wondering, what was it specifically in this blind man that attracted Jesus to him? That is what I want us to look at in the next 30 minutes. What attracted Jesus to Bartimaeus? 
what attracted him. Was it his pain? Was it his tears? Can I tell you, your pain doesn't attract God. Your tears, they don't attract him. Go and ask the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 2, they were walloping in pain in Egypt. They were suffering. God knew about it. Nothing takes God by surprise. He knew about it. Until they realized that they need help. And they began to cry to God. The Bible says God heard their cry. And he responded to them. So what is it in Bartimaeus that attracted God? It is his cry for mercy. Bartimaeus went to Jesus without entitlement. He was like, I don't deserve this healing. But I want him for sure. I know when I meet this man, he's so loving. He's so merciful. He will help me. You know, to Bartimaeus, he knew that his problem was as a result of sin. Yes. How do I know? In verse 41 of our text, his request to Jesus was that, may I regain my sight. Let me regain. You can't regain something that you didn't lose. He said, may I regain. I want to regain my sight. Meaning that Bartimaeus was not born blind. Like the story in John. That that man was born blind. And even he had no name. But for Bartimaeus, because for every child that is born, the mother, the parents, they give a name to that child. That man, his condition was so terrible that they even forgot to give him a name. But Bartimaeus knew that somehow, somewhere, I lose or I lost my sight. And to him, it was like he had sinned. Remember in that story of John chapter, chapter 9, the man that was born blind. You know, the disciples were asking Jesus that this man was born blind from birth. He came out, he couldn't see. Who have sinned? What am I saying here? It's not everything that you are going through is as a result of sin. And Jesus responded to them, neither the parents nor this child have sinned. But this condition is for God to glorify himself. So many a times when you face challenges, don't be quick to jump into it that is because of my sin. No. But Timaeus understood that a curse without a cause cannot hold. Proverbs 22 verse 2. It says, curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. What are they saying? Or what is uh, King Solomon saying here? He's saying that at times we open legal road or root for the devil to attack us. We give, we give legal ground for the devil to attack our lives. Because it says a curse without a cause will never hurt you. It will be like birds that fly, but they never alight. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you have lost to the devil. I don't know what you have lost in your life. I tell you this morning, when you meet the God of mercy, restoration will be your portion in the name of Jesus.
So I dive straight to what attracted Jesus to this man was his brokenness. 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 Sister Gladys touched this in person last Sunday. May I remind you of this? Kneeling down does not mean that you are broken. In prayer, you go on your knees. It doesn't mean that you are broken. Shedding tears doesn't mean that you are broken. Lying straight on the floor, prostrating, doesn't mean that you are broken. Mm -mm. That is not brokenness. What is then brokenness? Let me give you two definitions. Number one, write it down. Or you take a screenshot of this. Brokenness is a state of realization and acknowledgement of our limitation and inadequacy out of God. Remember, this man was lying on the street and he was begging. He couldn't help himself. He couldn't. So brokenness is when you realize that there is nothing I can do unassisted or without the presence of God. What did he do? When Jesus was passing, he was running to him to ask for help. Number two, brokenness is when you as an individual come to a point in your life when you are conscious that unassisted by the grace and mercy of God, there are heights that you cannot attain. There are heights that by your intellect, there are heights that by your position, you can never attain those heights unless the grace of God accompanies you. Unless the mercy of God is with you. That is brokenness. That is brokenness. You know, in Psalms 51 verse 16 and 17, David wrote this psalm after prophet Nathan confronted him. Remember, when he slept with another man's wife, that was Bathsheba, and impregnated her and even arranged for the killing of the husband, Urias, or Uriah. Look at how David approached God. I love this man, David. And probably, you remember, God says, this is a man after my heart. Look at what David said. You do not delight in sacrifice. You can ask King Saul what he did. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He says, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would have bring it to you. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit. It's a broken and contrite heart. This type, God will never despise. You know what? Often at times, people of God, we go to God proclaiming self-righteousness. We don't go approach God with, in brokenness. Jesus was speaking earlier in that chapter Luke chapter 18. He was talking about a parable of the Pharisees and a tax collector. Let me read. Remember, 
The Pharisees are what? Teachers of the law. Luke chapter 18. I want to read from verse 9. Listen to this. Jesus said, Verse 9. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. He said, also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they are, or they were righteous and despised others. He said, two men went up to the temple to pray. Two of them. They went to the temple to do what? To pray. All of them, they went to pray to God. And listen to this. One, a Pharisee, and the other, tax collector. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. extortioners, thieves, armed robbers, unjust, idolaters, or even as this tax collector who went with me. Do you think this man was a good friend? Imagine two of, us, two of us coming to the church. We are coming to pray. And my friend is telling me that I'm not even like you. Oh my God. <laughs> That even as this tax collector next to me, <laughs> I fast twice a week. Hey, I give tithes of all that I possess. He was given a do list. But you know what? This man forgot the list that he doesn't do. There's a do list and there's a list that you have not respected or honored. And he was talking. I pay tithe. I go to church. I read my Bible. I do that. I do that. I'm not like this, my friend, that even came with me to the temple. And listen to the tax collector. Have we ever heard of Sin of omission. Hello? Sin of omission. Listen to what James says. James chapter 4 verse 17. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him, it is a sin. You know the right thing to do and you do not do it. Isn't it? We went out for outreach yesterday. Carrying the good news to people out there. And I'm aware, and you are aware, that Brother Emmanuel preached here, established as what? As soul winners. You can't tell me that you didn't hear that message. You were here. But yesterday, we were eight of us that went, maybe because it's the eighth month, eight of us that went in the morning. And because of your busy schedule, we have programmed two sessions. The other one is at 4 p.m. And Brother Manuel was here. My question to you is that where were you? Hallelujah. We have a group of our brethren here who are from Little Shop. We went to Little Shop. Little Shop, can you, a representation. Can you say hello? Have you seen? This is Doing what Jesus asked us to do. Imagine we didn't go out. You wouldn't have seen these people today. I want to challenge someone here. That if the time is also not convenient to you. Nothing stops you from coming to speak to the uh, senior pastor. We will arrange a slot for you. And maybe some other people will follow you to evangelize. So James was saying. Knowing the right thing and not doing it 
is the same as sin. This Pharisee was justifying his acts. He was saying what he was doing. What about the things that he's not doing? But guess what? He forgot that he was not deceiving man. He was speaking to the one, the all-knowing God. The one that knows your end from the beginning and your beginning from the end. He forgot about that totally and he was justifying himself. Listen to what the tax collector said. And I love this man. And that is man, someone who is broken. The tax collector stood afar and would not even raise his eyes to heaven. You know, in him he was saying, I'm not even worthy to stand in this place. I'm not even worthy to call upon the name of Jesus. But he did something. The Bible says he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me. A sinner. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Listen to what Jesus said in conclusion there. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, the tax collector, because of his proclamation, because he realized who he is. He looked at himself. That prayer ground was like a mirror that was speaking to him. He was looking at himself in the mirror, seeing how dirty he is. And he was saying, I'm not worthy to even stand in this place. All I need is the mercies of the Lord to cleanse me. And Jesus says, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. I want to tell someone this morning, the way to go, to go up, or the way to go up is to first of all, go down. That is the way to go. A perfect example is that of Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, the Bible tells us, and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, a shameful one. And what happened? God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And that is the name that we are using today. That the name of Jesus is stronger than the strongest. The name of Jesus is above your challenges. That at the mention of that name, every knee will bow. At the mention of that name, Every knee will bow. The name of Jesus. He got that honor because he humbled himself. How humble are you? How humble are you? Can God resist a man with a broken heart? It's a question I want to ask us. Do you think, having listened to the story of this man, blind Bartimaeus, I'm asking you, can God resist this type of heart? David was talking about a humble and a contrite heart. A broken spirit. Can God resist this type of man? And the answer is no. Go with me to Verse 40 of Luke chapter 18. The Bible says, when Jesus heard the cry of this man asking for mercy, what did he do? He stood still. Oh, someone is not getting this. Your, your humble heart 
will cause Jesus to stand still and listen to you. Humility will bring you to a place where Jesus um, cannot go further. Remember, he was passing. He was not coming to this man. But when he saw the heart of this man, he said, no ways. I'm not going further. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. Humility, brokenness will take you to a place where God will hear your cry. God will listen to your cry. And then what does God want from us? Look at Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Paul said, Godly sorrow brings what? Repentance that leads to salvation. And it leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow, tears that are not from the heart, they bring nothing but condemnation. They bring nothing but death. So what does God want from us? Spiritual brokenness. Spiritual brokenness. We have to humble ourselves and respond to God's conviction of our sins, our shortfall. And also to depend on him. That is what God wants from you and from me. Before I finish, I want to quickly talk in passing about your desire. The four D's. D number one. The first D in this book. Someone is saying, are you advertising this book? I say, yes. It's my pastor's book. You need a copy. Tell your neighbor you need a copy. Somebody is not speaking to the neighbor. If I don't advertise my pastor's book, whose book should I advertise? You need a copy. And the book is not just for you to have it. It's for you to read it. Because there's a lot of revelation in this book. God has used his servant to sit down and assemble this information for our good. It's very rich, I tell you. You will not regret if you buy this book. Don't ask me the price. Go to pastor. Or you ask for his account and just do something spectacular. Amen. Yes, I hear that. Yes, yes. Who said yes? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Verse 41. Jesus returned to Bartimaeus and asked him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And Jesus, I mean, Bartimaeus replied that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, receive it right now. I don't know how many of us are hungry for God this morning. I don't know how many of us are tested to receive from him this morning. I know God wants to set you free from that addiction. I know God wants to set you free from that bondage. I know God wants to restore your honor. Remember, Bartimaeus was a son of honor, but he was on the street begging. He was on the street blind, and not only blind, he was begging. But one thing that I know is that if you meet the God of mercy, your honor will be restored in the name of Jesus. I don't care what you are here, you have lost to the enemy. 
I don't care what you think it is impossible for you to get back. I'm telling you, because you are here this morning, the mercies of the Lord will locate you in the name of Jesus. I just want you to be expectant. I just want you to have a burning desire. We are about to pray. I don't know what you've been crying for for so long. I've given you a formula this morning. I want you to apply that formula. I tell you, you will receive desired results right now. It's not about tomorrow. The Bible says that same time this man received his sight. It's not about with Jesus, there's no postponement. When you meet, when you encounter Jesus, it's not, this, this, you know, he doesn't tell you, no, just wait a minute, let me go and think. Think of Saul. On his way to Damascus, he had an encounter with Jesus, with God. It changed his name to Paul. I hear someone's name being changed this morning. I hear someone's situation being changed this morning. Wow, how desperate are you to receive from Jesus? How desperate are you to receive what he's done on the cross for you and for me? That will take you to your freedom this morning, people of God. Let me conclude so that we can pray by saying this. God has an addiction for a man with a broken heart. God had an, or has an addiction for a man with a broken heart. He is drawn to him more than he is drawn to church goers. To people who come to church but they are not broken. To people who are even prayerful. You can pray and you don't receive. It's not every prayer that gets an answer. Even the people who fast think of that Pharisee. He said, I fast twice a week. Meaning that in a month, he goes to about eight to ten times. If that month is having five weeks, it's not about the fasting. Let me worsen it again. Not even to people who read the word of God daily. And it's not applicable. You can't see the fruit in their lives. God has an addiction for a man with a broken heart. Amen. Can we be on our feet? How desperate are you? How desperate? I want you in one minute just to ponder a little bit on the message. The key of this message is brokenness. I want you to speak to yourself. Examine yourself. Like you are looking in the mirror, like this tax collector. You are saying, I'm not even worthy to stand in your presence. But Lord, one thing, I know your mercies will speak for me. The question I want to ask you this morning is, do you think God can pass you by? Remember, he was not coming to blind Bartimaeus. He was passing by. But something attracted him to this man. Do you think this morning that Jesus can pass you by? And I will tell you, he can pass you by if you don't have a relationship with him. He can pass you by if you had a relationship with him. Meaning that you are speaking in the past. What has happened? You've turned away. If you are here, all eyes closed. That you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. This is a moment for you. The God of mercy is here. 
If you are here and you've never surrendered your heart to him, this is a moment for you. Don't let him to pass you by. Are you here? You can lift up your hand. Say, I want to be helped. All eyes closed. You are just meditating on the message. Brokenness. Brokenness. You can speak to the hearing of your heart. You can speak to the hearing of your spirit. Say brokenness. Is someone here that wants to rededicate his life to Jesus? Who wants to give his heart to Jesus? I want to pray with you. If you are online and you want to do so, you can inbox us. We will get straight back to you. It's the best decision that you can ever take. There's nobody here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for yourself. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I surrender my heart to you. Often at times I've been proclaiming self-righteousness. I come to you this morning with a broken heart. Hear my cry. Hear my cry. Hear my cry and set me free. Oh, that affliction. That affliction, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to leave that brother in the name of Jesus. That addiction that you are so addicted to. The mercies of the Lord is locating you. Begin to pray. Someone is praying. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Say, Lord, I need help. On my own, I cannot do it. Say, I need help. Cry for help. Say, help me. Say, help me, Lord Jesus. Set me free. I am tired of this position. This blind man, Bartimaeus, he was tired of staying by the roadside and begging. That is why when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth is passing, he began to cry. Are you not tired of that position? Mazoka Dabo Shataya. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, open up your heart. The Lord is touching someone. The Lord is touching someone. The Lord is speaking to someone's heart. Don't resist. Don't resist. Empty yourself before him. Don't resist. I'm telling you, my brother, my sister, don't resist. The Lord is speaking to your heart. Respond to that voice.